Hey guys, this is Ladak for the Score Esports, and with me I have Perks, who just made it to the finals. And wait a minute, where did your shirt go? Uh, did for like was forgiven in the crowd? Did you give it to for him? Well, there was uh, a kid in the ground that had a sign. Perks, please give me your shirt. And there were some people screaming, so I had uh, social pressure to give him my shirt. Uh, hopefully I can find my second shirt so I can wear something in the finals. If I don't find it, then it's really unlucky. So, yeah. Okay, you definitely made that kid stay. That's uh, definitely super awesome of you. So, you guys made finals, second time for you. How, hi how hyped are you guys to like prove that you're the best team again? And maybe is this your chance to establish yourself as the best mid lane in Europe after there has been like some critique about you? Well, um, I, I don't want to be cocky or anything, but uh, ever since the last split, I thought of myself as the, as the best mid lane in Europe. And this split, it was just um, for the first three weeks, I think, of LCS, I played pretty poorly. And then after I figured out the meta, I didn't die on the... Uh, I didn't die to Rome's mid, I didn't die in lane subs, I didn't die in uh, side lanes. So I basically played pr pretty good in the last six weeks. And now after the patch, the patch meta changed again. So I still know what champs, I, now I know, after two weeks of scrims, I know what champs are the best, but I had some hard times adapting or not adapting, just trying new stuff out. Like I can, I'm can, i fine with playing any champ as long as I have to try it out. Like today I played four different champs in four games and. Uh, Two games I played was Talia and Mazar, and I played zero games in scrims. Mm. So it was like, or Talia was maybe one game, and Mazar I didn't play once in one month, I didn't play Mazar at all. So we just picked it on stage because it's good versus their comp. So it's all about like finding the picks and uh, yeah, adapting. Okay, that was definitely insightful. Um, so G2 actually has some pretty funny videos that they released, and they kind of depict you guys as bad boys, you know, like. Do you guys actually like enjoy playing this whole villain role, you know? And also, follow-up question is like, how evil is G two esports in real life? I mean, we are actually pretty nice guys, uh, unless we, unless you meet us in solo queue. <laughs> um, but the the whole villain thing, I think it's pretty cool. Or um, it's like we don't really care that much. It's just to make esports a bit more interesting uh, because, like, esports was really boring. Like, ULCS was at least boring. Like, and when G2 came in and after this MSI shit that happened that like none of us is proud of that, you know, or something and everyone was giving us uh, slack for that. So we just made it into a meme kind of, which is, I think, cool mm -hmm. because there is no like villains before or something. I mean, even though I'm not really a super villain, but <laughs> it's it's fine to have like bad, bad boys and good guys, you know, or something. I, I don't understand the whole point of it, but I think it's still good. Yeah. As long as you guys are having fun. Um, you said EU was boring, and I kind of want to do a follow-up question on that. So, people, like, I've been watching your stream and Sven's streams because you guys have been recently, like, adding a lot of stream hours, I feel, and they're pretty darn entertaining, but people have this perception of EU having no personality, and you also said, like, you felt like EU was boring. Like, maybe you can elaborate a little bit about how, why, why you think this is, and what EU players maybe could do to help this image? Well, I thought like EOCS was boring as a whole because there wasn't like teams rivalry or oh, something. Okay, okay, sure. It's not like uh, players are boring. I think EU players actually have so much person like different personalities and they're all like really cool people, at least the ones I know. And everyone is like different and it's just that they're not as famous as any players and there is not as much viewer base or fan base. So they can't really show it. And some people are like shy or are afraid to um, show their personality like while streaming or LCS or fan meets or whatever and um, the, st the streaming part is uh, not many EU players stream at all mm -hmm. because if they stream they get maybe fi uh, 50 to 200 viewers or something and uh, I guess me and Zven kind of have like a head start which we just started streaming like two months ago or something so I think in some months we, we can be uh, even better quality streamers and with more viewers and more fan bases, then maybe we can transfer that to other EU pros too. Because uh, I think EU pros should definitely like start streaming more and just get more fan base. I, I don't know. It's it's really hard to s to say to me as a player, but uh, yeah. No, no. I think I think you managed to get your point across. So. You made a tweet that I thought was really interesting because you tweeted, uh, an individual can only look uh, as good as the team. 
But on the other hand, we have like players like Freeze and Copenhagen when he was in Copenhagen Wolves, and we have like Steelback and Rocket. And people were like, you could really tell that those guys were outshining their team performance. So two questions I would have for you here would be, what does it actually take for a player to shine in a broken team? And also in regards to Fabivan and Reckless, are they going to be able to get back to their old performance just by their own effort? Or are they completely relying on their team in that regard? Well, um, to the freeze point, I think like the whole Copenhagen Wolves was playing around him like a lot. And that's what I heard was like he was uh, kind of forcing it because he was really good, so it's respectable. And the, the steelback point is like, that's actually a pretty tricky one because he's the only player that looks very good on a very bad team. But he has a lot, like he's actually a good player and he actually does play for KDA as long as, I mean, <laughs> honestly, he did he did choose ELO Hell teams, so I can respect that he's playing for KDA. I mean, it's not like he's only playing for KDA, don't get me wrong, Silvek, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but he like, he plays really because his team is doomed, so he, he has to play like that, you know. <laughs> Uh, and about team individual individual performances in other teams, it's like it's really hard to say because you don't know how well teams uh, mesh with each other. For example, Fnatic, like they have strong individual players on like almost every role, um, and uh, they don't mesh really well together. They don't seem to work together well. So it maybe comes to personalities or to how teams work together. Mm -hmm. So I, I think Fabian and Reckless are still very strong players, and it's said that they're not like top team. But uh, I'm sure they will be top team next week, maybe. So, okay, no problem. Um, I would say let's start, let's start talking a little bit about the game. Now, the draft was, I would say, interesting. Uh, I, I, I I didn't always agree with every one of your decisions, especially in game two. You guys were potentially at risk of giving the opponents the Exodia team comp, like you could have given them uh, the Shen Hecarim, Kassad, and Tarek, which you guys respect a lot. So in hindsight, what would you say went well in the draft? What didn't work out? Like, just talk a little bit about how the draft ended up developing over the course of the series. Um, the second game, sh well, we first we first played as Rexay and C, right? Well, Unicorns is like an, er an early game team, which relies a lot on their jungler to making plays with top lane. So that didn't actually happen this series. They completely, I think they changed the, the play style. They played a lot to mid and bot, as far as I'm right. Like, it's actually good by them because we actually prepared for them uh, ganking top a lot and only playing to top, but mm -hmm. they completely changed the playstyle, so that was interesting by them. But the Exodia comp, I think there is some champs that you can pick, like Tam and Cassiopeia, which are good versus going champs, because you can just kite and you can deal so much damage to champs to the go in. So I don't think it will be like game over and we will have a winning m matchup mid and bot most likely. So, and right now it's all about the early pressure and getting their early lanes pushing, every lane pushing, and then getting a first turret. And from first turret, it's easy snowball. So, <coughs> game where we had Talia. What happened that game? I, it's, the series is really <laughs> kind of cl cloudy for me. Oh, the blank roam and gets, uh, got some free kills on top. So, that was a bit unlucky <laughs> that he actually got uh, pretty far ahead because of the roams. Maybe it was like because me not calling enough or some other factors, but the game was pretty good for our side, I think, because we had better draft for sure. We had every lane winning, and um, after getting bot through it, it, it was an easy game again, even though it was kind of sloppy, but we have to pick it up for finals for sure. Yeah, l um, let's talk about finals. So you guys are going to be facing Splice, and we already heard from both the sides of Yamato and Youngbug, you guys went all out. Like, everybody knows what the other team is playing. So what are they, like, looking forward to the matchup against Splice? And I hear a zzz, so maybe you guys have some hidden strategies for them? Well, I actually think uh, we haven't shown everything today. It's for sure, like at least I haven't shown <laughs> half of the champs I play. Uh, so it's going to be interesting how we match up to Splice because we screamed against them a lot. So they know a lot of champs that we played before, but maybe we do or do not play now. I cannot confirm or deny. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to play Splice because I think they showed everything against H2K mm -hmm. or not really everything. They didn't even show everything. They just had the same strategy, which they have to do to win. They have to get Wunder ahead with Nar, and they um, have to have a jungler that can actually do something. So, but it's it's still hard to say. 
because Splice is a good team. So, so they, so they, they will prepare something else for us too. But uh, I think it's going to be a close match. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I, I hope for exciting finals. Uh, definitely, everyone is hoping. But I think we're going to get one. Uh, just as a final wrap up, so you guys already qualified for Worlds. You already announced your boot camp. What are you, like, your expectations going into Korea? Like, how much do you think you can grow as a player? And what are your expect uh, expectations going into Worlds? Like, how far do you want to go? Well, obviously, I'm just a dreamer, but my goal is to win Worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I, again, don't think I'm playing that good because of the meta change again. So it will take me some time to adapt. Hopefully, by the Worlds patch, uh, I will uh, be there on top level. So I'm really looking forward to playing um, teams from Korea and uh, China and even North America, like TSM. Mm -hmm. So to learn their strategies and to copy something that they do good or maybe learn from some other player, like, I don't know, Faker or Bjergsen or someone who is really good, so I can actually improve my play too. And um, hopefully the meta, mid meta changes a bit to a bit more skilled champs and push only. That will also be very appreciated. Thanks, Riot. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing Worlds because it's going to be my, well, not first time on big stage because I've already played, I'm going to be playing two finals and MSI, but just going to be so hyped. I don't know. Like last year, I watched Worlds from a person, a spectator, and I was in like in London and it was so hyped. like felt really special, so I can't imagine how it feels like when you're playing that there yourself. So I at least want to get out of groups and then see how far we can go. Okay, I definitely wish you the very best, both in the finals and in the World Championship. Uh, that, was it on, uh, that was it on our side. If you guys want to see more videos, then please go on the scoreesports.com or just download the app. See you guys the next time.